There are now about a half a million septic tanks in Ireland, and a large proportion of these are malfunctioning and polluting our water systems with human sewage. The problem with septic tanks is that they percolate underground, out of sight and mind, and are difficult to inspect and monitor. Yet, they've become the predominant source of domestic wastewater treatment in rural areas. I'm travelling to the south of the country, to Cork, to meet Ger O'Leary from the Environmental Protection Agency, to find out more about the problem. It has completely overwhelmed the actual septic tank. When you have up to half a million septic tanks uh, in rural Ireland, that's a problem right across the countryside. How bad are some of these septic tanks? Oh, I, I think all you've got to turn to is that in many parts of the countryside, uh, on-site systems are not suitable. The soil is very, very heavy. And if you put water into heavy soils, it goes nowhere. So you've got uh, water with E. coli uh, available uh, um, on the ground surface. You have children, you have dogs running around this area and carrying, carrying disease. And what happens when a flood takes place in an area like that? Oh yeah, you then have, you could have the sludge from these systems that are built up over a period of time being washed away uh, into these rivers and streams, causing further problems. In addition, there are leaking pipes and faulty, outdated infrastructure prevalent in many parts of the country. It's becoming clear that if we keep using and wasting water at this rate, we'll face significant water shortages in the near future. The EU directives are urgently compelling us to find solutions, legally, financially and environmentally. So what can we do to meet these requirements and achieve high quality water status by 2015? Enforcement of legislation certainly plays an important role. For example, prior to the Galway water crisis, there was no single authority responsible for water catchment management and public water supplies. When the EPA became the supervising authority, specialist monitoring equipment was installed, which led to a steady decrease of E. coli. Another illustration of what can be done is Poolbeg Wastewater Treatment Plant in Dublin, one of our most up-to-date examples of water infrastructure in Ireland. Here I meet international environmental economist Sean Blacklock. General water is obviously very important to Ireland. It's one of its main commodities that uh, attracts uh, foreign investment. Obviously, it's a, a resource that uh, Ireland depends on in the domestic, the agricultural, as well as the industrial sector. And of course, that includes boating and fishing. Uh, a lot of that is associated with tourism. I mean, you have to think beyond just the water services element of it. That's hotels, that's public transport in Ireland, that's airlines in Ireland. It goes on and on and on in the spillover benefits throughout that entire sector in tourism. And of course, that's just one example. So how are we going to address raising our water quality standards from an economic point of view here in Ireland? Really, the only option in order to generate the revenues to make those investments is with domestic charges. But in a time of economic crisis, the fact is, if you aren't charged the water rate, we have to continue to try to comply with the Water Framework Directive, and it's going to come from somewhere. So you're either going to pay for it through higher product prices, or you're going to pay through it through a raise in VAT or a raise in income taxes. Do other countries in Europe know the cost of their water? The last figure I saw was around 160 litres per capita per day in Ireland, and that measures with the 120 per litres per day for the likes of Germany and Denmark and the United Kingdom, where there are actual water charges in the domestic sector. So both theory and what evidence there is suggests that Irish people don't value the water as highly as these other countries. The government intends bringing in domestic water charges nationwide by 2014, when all homes will be fitted with meters. The question is how we can ensure that these charges will be applied fairly to householders and that the money will be directed towards future water infrastructure. We already pay over 1 billion euro a year through taxes to fund water services in Ireland. Ireland is the only country in Europe that doesn't charge directly for domestic water use although two-thirds of all our water use is in our homes. 
Meters will encourage us to save water and we won't be paying for those who squander it. It's all very well in theory, but how can metering and charging work practically? I'm meeting up with Brian MacDonald, who has been putting these ideas into practice in the private group water schemes around Ireland. Across the group scheme sector, where metres have been effectively used, where they've been read, we are seeing water savings of between 40 and 80%. That's through careful management, it's through a focused policy on the part of the group water schemes, and certainly we are seeing this investment paying real dividends, both for the environment and for the communities. You cannot reduce water on a sustained basis without universal metering. Metres are, first and foremost, a management tool. Unfortunately, people see them as a charging mechanism, but they are first and foremost a way of identifying where's our water going. And in the group water scheme sector, it is proven that once metres are even being put into the ground, consumption falls. People begin for the first time to value water again, to think of the value and of the cost of water, and they immediately reduce their consumption. Pumping in billions of euro will help fix a faulty and contaminated water system. However, the more polluted a water catchment becomes, the more costly it is to treat it. The practical solution is addressing the obvious causes of pollution at source before the effect of river catchments, which is much more economic than trying to clean up after the fact. We don't have to look too far for an example of this. The Mulcair River Catchment EU Life Project in County Limerick is dedicated to restoring and balancing the ecosystem along its whole river catchment, from its source to where it meets the River Shannon. It's a massive catchment. It covers Limerick, it covers uh, Tipperary County. In total, it covers an area of about 650 square kilometres, so it's a very large catchment. It's regarded as one of the top five rivers within Ireland for its salmon. And what we want to ensure is that that is enhanced and that the habitats for salmon are enhanced through our in-stream works. So what's this project got to do with water quality? Well, obviously, water quality is tied into the whole ecosystem of the Mulcair. So how it interrelates is through the impacts of farming, for example, and we're trying to work with the local farming community to lessen the impacts of source pollution. But also it's interrelated to the habitats within the system. The project encourages growth of diverse native species along the whole river. The first step in this process is to identify what's stopping this happening in various sections of the river. Rory, is this the first obstacle on the, on the river, the Mulcair? It is indeed. This is Anacotti Weir, and it's the first major barrier for upstream passage of any of the fish species. And in, the one that we're obviously particularly interested in is salmon and um, uh, sea lamprey. There's probably in excess of 184 kilometres of prime habitat that these barriers, this barrier and Valley Claw, are acting as a barrier for upstream passage. So we want to address this concern and we want to open up that habitat for sea lamprey. There's a direct connection between healthy native biodiversity, as seen here, and good water quality, in that you can't have one without the other. If the water quality is bad or contaminated, the diverse range of plant and animal life needed to create a vibrant river system just will not survive. Rory, why do the otters like it here? Well, this is the prime otter habitat that you have here, uh, Duncan. It's really top class and it's habitat like that that we want to enhance along the riparian zone. We've undertaken a catchment-wide otter survey that has shown that, in a general sense, uh, the otter population within the catchment is pretty good. So they're good indicators now of water quality also. They are indeed. Well, because of the interrelationship between otter and their food source, so predominantly frogs, eels and other fish, there is a very clear relationship between water quality, the availability of invertebrates for the fish, and in turn, the availability of the fish and other species for the otter. So there's a very clear interrelationship as part of the wider ecosystem. The LIFE project is EU-funded and communities can apply for it. By learning from these projects, we could use their solutions. An approach like this could be an effective tool in addressing our many water pressures across the whole country. So even though we have many serious and large-scale pressures affecting most of our river catchments, water treatment plants and leaking mains, 
There are solutions and the technology is available. But are they going to ensure we meet the EU directives by 2015? I think they're going to be very, very challenging, but I think we're going to have to do it uh, in steps. Money is short, and I think uh, what we need to do is we need to identify the areas at highest risk, tackle those, and then start moving down that particular list. There's still a long way to go, particularly, I think, in the public schemes, there is an investment programme there that will have to continue. We've invested a lot of money in, in research in the whole water area, and I think we should use the challenges that we face in Ireland as an opportunity as part of the wider uh, green economy. Some of our researchers are now internationally well known for their work in the whole area of on-site wastewater treatment systems. So I think we should look at in terms of the, the potential that uh, the, these new engineers and these technicians can do for Ireland, but also as an export opportunity for the, all the skills that they would develop to both design and operate these wastewater treatment systems. If we place a greater value on our water as a precious resource that's now at risk, not only will we ensure high quality and reliable drinking water, but we can also use this natural resource to stimulate industry, restore ecosystems and attract tourists into Ireland, thus reinstating Irish water to its pristine status. Coming up in a later programme, we'll explore how a group of farmers in County Cork came together to monitor and protect their river catchment.